You already know the rules. Don't look in the mirror when it's dark. Series. I'm back. Yeah. I didn't write anything for a little while. To tell you the truth, I wasn't exactly writing for a huge audience here. You know, being a guardian is lonely sometimes. And I was up at like 3 a.m and had the sudden urge to write some educational stuff on Reddit. And suddenly I've got hundreds of people being all how do I stop myself getting murdered by horrible monsters. Fear it. And, well, it's a lot of pressure on top of my day job. The only reason I wrote this all down in the first place was because I reckon nobody would read it. Yeah, the name is Fearin. Fearinish is an old joke among my friends, that we're only similar to ourselves. Like, I'm a Fearin-shaped human, or Fearinish, or Fearin-like, but the true Fearin would be too powerful to behold. Personally I think it's hilarious, but I understand if you want to punch me a little. So yeah, I took some time off, but I still want to help. And lots of you guys seem to want to know the story behind the mirrors. See, you've all got the primal instinct. It's a good instinct. Nobody ever told you that you mustn't look in a mirror when it's late at night and you go to the bathroom in the dark. Nobody ever said hey, that's dangerous, because of spooky supernatural shit. And you might not have believed them if they did. But you know, you know, without needing to be told, you've evolved that fear. So you want to know why? It's understandable, I guess. Let me tell you about Alicia Craig. Alicia's mother called me. When she opened the door, she opened it just a crack, so I could barely see the nerves etched on her face. Are you the guard? She whispered. Pointlessly, I should add, since anything worth being scared of can hear your whispers just fine. Guardian? I corrected. I'm a guardian. Yes. You lit a candle in the window. I'd heard about it. I'm here. She opened the door a little more, but was still blocking it enough that I couldn't come in. It's, well, it's my daughter. She's, we're all a little afraid of her. But, you won't, she's not dangerous or, I'm not going to hurt her. I told her in my most reassuring leader promise kind of voice. I didn't actually use the word promise. She let me in. The apartment, like many in Edinburgh, was accessible from a winding unlit stone staircase. It was a relief to be in the warm golden light of the hallway. I closed the door behind me and spent a brief moment admiring the brightly colored creatures on the walls. They were brilliantly lifelike paintings, each depicting an animal, a fox, a hare, a stag poised to leap away into the shadows of a forest. The backgrounds were sketched in rough blotchy watercolor, the loose hand of a truly confident artist, but the animals themselves were done with a lover's attention to detail. Harry does those. Alicia's mother had noticed me looking. Her brother. He's away at university. Doing zoology. I asked. Admiring the layered feathers on the robin beside the door. Biology. But yeah, he likes the animals. Do you want a cup of tea or something? That'd be lovely. And then I'll need to meet Alicia. I was hurried through into a similarly decorated kitchen. The Craigs had a large collection of mismatched mugs. Sort of like my own. I like those little moments where you see someone else living just like you and it reminds you that you're still human. You know, I need those sometimes. My tea came in an oversized red mug with curved sides, perfect for warming both my hands. It had dots and a green leafy pattern at the rim, like it was pretending to be a giant strawberry. I was so caught up admiring it that I almost didn't see Alicia. Can I have a cup of tea? She asked plaintively. Her mother, who had just sat down with her own mug of tea, sighed and got back up. While Alicia's mother made tea, I studied the girl. She seemed normal enough. Bright eyes, brown hair, freckles, a creased school uniform. She flopped down in one of the kitchen chairs and then returned my stare. I don't know what she was looking at. I'm pretty sure I appeared normal enough. I don't go around wearing cloaks or anything stupid. Not unless I'm going LR or pink. I still haven't really figured out my style since I switched genders and all. But at the time I was going through a phase of wearing long dark coats and jumper vests because I thought it made me look gentlemanly. In hindsight it made me look like a butch secondary school English teacher. But you know, we live and we learn. Those bright eyes studied me, and after a little while I began to get uncomfortable under their gaze. Is this the guard you talked about, Mum? The one who can help with my nightmares? Guardian? I corrected wearily. I could already tell you was going to get really tired of that. Yes. Alicia's mother glanced at me. You can fix that, right? I don't know. I've never had a guard a guardian before. I didn't know you all even existed and a month ago I wouldn't have believed it. I just, how did you hear about me? I inquired. Always curious to know where I'm getting my business from. Librarian. Alicia replied before her mother could answer. I asked my librarian. Mum didn't want to call you at first but I said a candle in the window had a high risk reward ratio because it wouldn't really hurt us if you didn't come. And if you did then it'd prove something supernatural was happening. I raised an eyebrow. Alicia didn't look old enough to be saying things like risk reward ratio. I see. Well, Alicia, can I ask you a few questions? Alicia nodded. First of all, can you tell me what's been happening? I get really mad sometimes. Alicia told me matter of factly. She seemed quite calm. Like really, really mad. It doesn't feel good. And when I feel really mad sometimes people get sick. Mum had food poisoning for a week after she made me eat some broccoli. I didn't mean to do anything. I nodded and took that in. That description could mean any number of things. Okay, Alicia, thank you for telling me. Can I ask you something else? She nodded. The bright eyes were still studying me carefully. The world has lots of dangerous things in. But usually humans have lots of natural defenses, too. Like how the kitchen has dangerous fire in it, that your mum uses to cook. 
but you wouldn't really touch the fire because it'd be hot and painful so you'd pull your hand away. That instinct keeps you safe. You know what I mean. Alicia nodded. I decided to trust that she understood. Kids are usually smarter than you think they are. Our instincts keep us safe from the supernatural too. Like how you imagine that thing running alongside your car. And you play the game where you don't step on any cracks. And you feel safer if your bed is against the wall. Did you do anything against those rules recently? Alicia hesitated, then crossed her arms. I hurriedly added, you're not in trouble if you did. Sometimes people get to feeling brave and experimental and they want to see what happens. I just need to know so I can fix it. She paused, fidgeted, then relented. I looked in the bathroom mirror, when it was really dark. I just wanted. It was scary and I wanted to understand why it was scary. I thought it was brave. Brave is such a stupid way of saying stupid. It's a dumb word. Can I take a look at the mirror? I asked. Alicia's mum got up in response and guided me down the hallway to the bathroom. It's not just the anger. She told me in a whisper as soon as we left the room. Shit. Changes a bit. She doesn't remember doing it. I looked down at the phone I was offered and flipped through a few pictures. Alicia's face twisted with something dark and awful. A grin far too wide and eyes a little too large, screaming at something behind the camera. A cat torn to pieces. A post-it note left on a fridge reading. It's too late. The mirror in the bathroom was just a mirror. I turned the lights on and then smiled at it experimentally. My own face smiled back, with my own sea green eyes and poorly taken care of teeth. There was a hint of flame around my hair, a sign of my dancing partner. But of course Alicia's mother couldn't see that. She hovered behind me nervously. I returned to the kitchen table, projecting calm as strongly as I could. Nobody needed to know that seeing the cat bothered me. So what's up? Can you help her? Of course. I settled myself back down and finished my tea. Mirrors are important to our souls. They're not doors to an alternate dimension or whatever else you've heard. At least not unless it's a rather special mirror. But the act of recognizing yourself, of thinking that, ah, yes, that's me. I'm a being who thinks. That's what creates and reinforces the self. Mirrors can rather directly facilitate that process. So do other things that help us recognize ourselves. Reading back through your old diaries, for instance. Or even doing those stupid which Disney princess are you quizzes online. If you get a vaguely accurate answer, that doesn't help Alicia. Alicia's mother seemed significantly more anxious and impatient than Alicia herself. I'm getting to that. There's beings that would like to slip in, always. Possession. But usually humans are quite hard to possess. Because we know who we are and what we want and it's hard for something to take over without some kind of foothold. Distorted reflections can give them that foothold. You think you recognize yourself, you accept the reflection as yourself, but it isn't you. Hiding in the shadowy parts there's something you're not looking at. And it's not something you want to invite into yourself. Clean mirrors and well-lit rooms are safest. So I need to move the mirror. Yes. And I rummaged around in the bag I brought for a moment. Possession's an easy fix. Since it's frowned upon by fey laws and human morality, so it's much easier to get help without offending anyone. You've caught it at an early enough stage that some fairly minor positive spirits ought to be able to handle things. I'll just give you some stuff that attracts the helpful kind of beings and we'll let them handle it. Lavender circle around Alicia's bed. Here's a silver ring. Here's a token to leave on an open windowsill. And do you have a pen? Here's the lyrics for a summoning song. Tune doesn't matter. I handed over the things, packed up my bag, drank another cup of tea and made small talk for five minutes. I remember feeling pretty good about it all. I'd done my job as a guardian. It hadn't been hard, they'd been reasonably friendly and I'd got two cups of tea out of the bargain. I went and handled other things, spreadsheets at work, a date and a few chalk lines and back alleys that needed a quick refresh. I came back two days later just to check in, and Alicia answered the door. I'd just come from work, and it was winter in Edinburgh, so it was dark and my fingers were freezing. Hey, Alicia. I greeted her brightly, feeling much better. Much. Can I speak to your mother? Alicia let me in without a word. I walked in and looked around then poked my head in the kitchen. No sign of Alicia's mother. Hey, where is she? I called out to Alicia. There was an audible click as Alicia shut the door behind me. She's in her room, the girl told me. I walked along the hallway to the door Alicia indicated, then hesitated and took a step left into the bathroom instead. There it was, in the mirror, a tiny crack, right in the corner. How could I not have noticed it before? And running along a few of the corner lines of the bath and in the tiny groove at the edge of the mirror. Mold. The black kind that appears when you don't clean the bathroom enough. That was very very bad. I had a sinking feeling that something awful might have happened to the positive spirits the Craig summoned. I emerged back into the hallway. The child at the other end of the hallway, framed in the light of the kitchen, wasn't Alicia. In the shadows I could see where her face twisted, where her grin wasn't a child's grin, where her skin cracked and fragmented into shadows. The thing took one step forwards and I bolted into Alicia's mother's room and slammed the door behind me. Alicia's mother wasn't herself, either. She'd been rearranged. Her nerves were laid out in lines and rose across the walls, her blood vessels a tangle on the bed. Her intestines strung out across the desk. Something had been curious about how humans were put together, I suppose. Mold had overtaken the room. Black was splashed all over the folded skin, the urine-soaked bed linen, 
the carpet and the desk. Some sort of rot had set into the intestines, with the half-digested contents showing through the rotted away sections. The heart was pulsing slowly around the two colored kids' pencils that impaled it on the desk. Scribbles and doodles covered the walls next to the nerves strung up there. A tiny sheep with a pink balloon was depicted in crayon and mold next to the brown-black dried splatter that I suspected might have once been a kidney. I took one step forwards and a lung squelched beneath my foot, and the entire room shuddered and made the most awful noise I've ever heard and I had the awful awful realization that Alicia's mother might still be alive. The doorknob behind me turned. I didn't hesitate. I just sprinted. I made it to the window and flung myself out, not even caring about what might happen when I hit the ground. I'm not proud of abandoning that woman there, and I never even learned her name, but I'm proud that I'm alive. I broke an ankle. George patched me up later. It's useful having a friend who's a nurse. I don't know what Alicia is now. I. Some things are above my pay grade. I'm a guardian. I keep the peace. Stuff that possesses you. It wasn't part of the peace in the first place. I don't have to negotiate. I don't have to arrange for humans to keep out of other people's space in exchange for other beings not killing us. The Fae want that shit exterminated just as much as we do. I let that kind of thing be handled by, well, people that can afford to even contemplate being in that room when that door opened. I still have nightmares about it. Anyway, that's why you don't look in mirrors when it's dark. Please, for the love of all the gods there's a reason why that terrifies you. Listen to that instinct. Don't make me break any more ankles. Please, if this post gets even one of you to avoid that kind of fate, it's worth me being awake at 8am posting this shit. Hit me up in the comments if you want any more explanations. Oh, and I mostly tweet about my day job and gaming but feel free to follow me on Twitter. You already know the rules. Please follow them. Rules. Please follow them. Rules.